Good morning. I'm here to do business and let's get straight into their issues. Joy Business can confirm the Ayensu starch factory has shut down and the company owes close to 500 farmers. The defunct company has led to a cassava glut which is driving down prices. A ton of cassava sold last year for 300 Ghana cities is going for 100 cities. Cassava meant for the factory cannot be absorbed by market women. Just in the Bojasi town, we are met by Charles Pado, a farmer of Kasama. He confirms to us that indeed, the Ayensu Starch factory has collapsed. Charles further gives us evidence by bringing a friend's receipt of payments the company is supposed to make. The receipt dates as far back as October 2017. Since then, farmers have not received any money. Charles' brother, Philip, says over 500 farmers are owed money, including himself. They are owing me about 2,000 plus. Mm. And about how many farmers do you think they are owing? They are more than 500. For now, several hectares of cassava planted purposely for the Ayensu starch factory is being left in the farms. Last two years, people banked their hope on the... I used to start factory. So a lot of farmers started growing the cassava. So this year, as the, 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 the factory has closed down, there are a lot of cassava in the farms. So the Gary people, you say, it's a local market. So for them, when they come to the farm, they only buy a few. Let's say, if you have, let's say, 10 acres of the cassava, the Gary people cannot buy all. They only purchase about, let's say, two, three roofs. Pricing currently, as a result, is a mess. Cassava last sold at the Ayensu Start Factory at 300 CDs a ton is now 100 CDs, while cassava dough, which went for 80 CDs per bag, is going for 35 Ghana CDs. The collapse of the Ayensu Starch factory has several repercussions, issues relating to food security for farmers who actually depended on the factory is a major issue. But to these women who make abelima, which is used in the local food bank, are actually having a field day as now the cost of cassava has reduced drastically. But to the farmers, this is a major loss. So before, if they could sell at 800 cities, they're currently selling at some 200 cities. The farmers say that, well, this is going to push them to go into other crops. We are off to Ayensu Starch Factory to see things for ourselves. There is virtually dead silence at the place. No official is willing to talk on camera, but we are told informally that the company is shut down. Information we gather is that they, however, have starch in store that needs to be sold. Ghana produces 16 million metric tons of cassava, out of which only 4 million is consumed. The first starch factory under the presidential initiative, which was bought by a private firm, the Ayensu Starch Factory, collapsed leaves the country with no starch factory now. Cassava production alone forms 22% of the agricultural GDP and the non-existence of Ayensu only means a huge glut driving prices so low for farmers. The managing director of Stambik Bank Ghana Limited, Al Hassan Andani, has called for a new regulation which will ban individual majority shareholders from being part of top management of firms they have invested in. It has emerged that interference by individual majority shareholders of liquidated banks in the management position contributed to their collapse. The legal entity that has obligations and you as an individual, you know, with your shares in the, in, the, in the institution or the bank, have your personal ambitions. Now, to the extent that your, your personal interest is almost reflecting the interest of the firm, there can be massive uh, conflict of interest uh, uh, problems. And it probably is prudent not to allow that. Probably not prudent to allow people with significant shareholdings to also run these institutions. However, it all that it has to do with the level of governance around the management of conflict of interest. If you look at your Warren Buffett of this world, they, they, they run global companies, but they, they wouldn't, and they have massive interest in these companies. But governance, management of conflict of interest, and best practices are 
employed, and therefore it's very transparent. And, and you don't see the personal interest overriding the interest of the firm. Because remember in the firm, you know, you are, people have voted for you innocently. Depositors have voted for you innocently, and their interest is paramount. So if you sit as a majority shareholder and just looking after your interest, you might you know, overstep that and then impact other, uh, other parties who have also a stake in the firm. So it's probably not prudent to have that situation. Uh, but again, rules must be there for uh, managing conflict of interest and enforcing conflict of interest situation. Yeah. We're doing some more agricultural stories and 426 hectares of land affected by mining activities in Daman have been reclaimed. To make good of its value to improve agricultural development, the Goldfields Darmai Mines says it has generated $8.3 million in a savings bond reclaim lands and improve um, agriculture in its host communities. Sarah Abla de Souza joined some farmers on a tour of reclaimed lands at Daman and she's brought this report. Cabbage, pepper, watermelon, coconut and cocoa grown on a land which used to be a dump for mining residue. This was the tailing site for Goldfields Daman mine. It was decommissioned in 2015. Oh. This once tailing dump is now an oil palm and coconut farm at Damang in the western region. It was used as a dumping site for residue from the mining pits between 2004 and 2017 and when it was decommissioned. In March 2018, rehabilitation of this site began and, 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 and what you see here is just about four months old. To show the people of Daman the reclamation progress, chiefs and leaders in the catchment area were taking on a tour of reclaimed tailing dumps. <laughs> in its address at an open forum before the tour, general manager of Goldfields Daman, Mahil van der Merve, said Responsible mining puts the land back to use. He noted that the company's policy on recovery is to rehabilitate disturbed lands while mining operations continue. 426 hectares has already been reclaimed by the mine, even though the mine is at the peak of its operations. And a lot of the reason for that is we open up our mines, uh, we establish the area where we operate, and that is, in many, in many senses, the area that you're going to disturb. As you carry on and you mine new areas, the areas that you come and disturb, the new mines that you open up, is relatively small compared to the areas that is already disturbed. So over the years, we have already reclaimed 426 hectares. He noted that Damang Mine is the first in Ghana to sign a reclamation security agreement with the government and post a reclamation bond in the year 2000. The 2018 bond value is estimated at $8.3 million. The reason why we have that bond, experience has shown, not only in Ghana, all over the world, you get some mining companies that go off the profit, they mine the area, and then they run away and they never do the reclamation. To ensure something like that doesn't happen, uh, we've signed this bond to make sure as we produce now, every month, we're putting money away so that if anything ever happens, this bond is there. Some of this money is ready for government to come and reclaim the area. Mahil van der Merve said a 10-acre rubber plantation has been started with 4,000 rubber seedlings planted. The company is calling for a partnership with landowners to convert some areas in the mine into cocoa and rubber plantations as part of managing its mining trail. That's how we end the business segment. My name is Odile Ntiamwa. Let's make a date at 12.30 where we'll give you some more business.